Hey there, it's Jackie from Jet Setting with Jackie. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. In this week's video, I will be doing a recap of the six countries that we visited while in Europe and the UK. So if Europe is on your list of places to go this year, stick around for the rest of the video. In this video, I'll share my thoughts and experience on each of the cities that we visited, whether they were friendly towards us or not. I'll talk about some of the things that stuck out in each of these countries and provide a rating for the overall country itself. I'll also provide some tips that you can do and use while you're planning your trip for Europe and while traveling in Europe. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave my favorite place for last and my least favorite place second to last. So the first country that we stopped in on our European tour was Spain. We visited two cities in Spain. Our first stop was in Madrid. We spent two nights in Madrid and then we left for Barcelona where we spent one night. Now, of all the cities in Spain, and yes, I've only been to two, but Barcelona is my favorite. It has so much history, and there's so many things there to see. I really wished we had more time in Barcelona. Yes, Madrid was great, history is nice, and of course the people were amazing. Even our host at the Airbnb, he was so helpful. We needed somewhere to eat the night that we got there and he was more than helpful to walk us to a restaurant. So the people in Spain overall, great people, but I really, really loved Barcelona. I would say Barcelona provided a much different vibe than Madrid. I'm not sure exactly what it was. I don't know if it's the fact that it's so much more coastal and the history is so different, but I don't know, Barcelona really did it for us. Just having the chance to experience La Sagrada Familia in Barcelona was something that I will truly never forget. So if Spain is on your itinerary, make sure you have a stop in Barcelona. And I would say don't spend less than a day there. Spend at least two to three days because I do feel like there's so much to see. I do feel like two days in Madrid was plenty, but I really wished we had more time in Barcelona. One tip that I would like to share is to make sure that you're staying close to the city center in either of these cities. We stayed outside of Madrid and just having to take Ubers and taxis back and forth did start to rack up some costs for us. So if we had a chance to do things differently, we would definitely try to stay closer to the city center because that's where everything is. And once you're in the city center, everything's in walking distance. When we were in Barcelona, we stayed on the side of town that was actually really nice. We were in walking distance of really nice eateries and the hotel was nice. So I don't think I would change our place that we stayed in Barcelona, but definitely would think about changing it for Madrid next time. So if I were to rate each of these cities and then the overall country, I would give Barcelona an eight and a half and Madrid a seven and a half. Which, if you average that out, Spain gets an overall rating of eight. Prior to going to Europe, we had an idea in our mind of what Italy was supposed to be like. When you watch it on TV, which yeah, everything isn't what you see on TV, but when you watch it on TV, you see this place that is just so beautiful and everyone's so fun and nice and the food looks really good. But then once you get there, it's a different experience. A little bait and switch happening here. So our trip to Italy included a stay in Milan and in Naples. We spent two nights in Milan and we also spent two nights in Naples. Then we took a day trip from Naples to Rome, which I feel like was the saving grace for Italy. Italy was, to say the least, 
not exactly what we had expected. From the moment we got there, it felt like we didn't belong there, unfortunately. When we got to Milan, we took a bus to get us to the closest train station that was close to our Airbnb. Once we got to the train station, we ordered an Uber and we waited and waited and every time we <laughs> every time we thought our uber was coming it canceled on us after a while we just decided well let's forget about doing the uber let's go try to catch a taxi instead so it seems like there's a big issue going on with uber in italy because it didn't only just happen in milan i believe it also happened again in naples so whatever the deal is uber in italy just is not in a good place so we walked over to the taxi stand and there's a line of people and each person waits their turn and then whoever's next gets in the next taxi that pulls up while my cousin and i were waiting a driver pulls up and just started telling us no no like you can't get in the car can't get in the car then he claims that our bag's too big to fit in the car there's only two of us and him. He has a pretty decent sized car. This is not the first driver that we've been with that's had a car. We have two large suitcases and two backpacks. There are several times where we've put one big suitcase in the trunk, one inside the car, and we keep our backpacks with us. So the way that he was talking to us was not the nicest. And of course, it kind of made us feel like, okay, why are you singling us out as to why you you don't want to pick us up so that happened he left and uh, you know we waited our turn until the next driver came and the next driver picked us up not a good experience being in a foreign country where we don't really understand the language that well but he definitely did not want to carry us for whatever reason we can assume things or we can not assume things but it definitely felt like it was because of the way we look we left Milan not feeling the best about Italy and then we ended up in Naples and to be honest Naples wasn't that much better of a place either the only part that I would say was the best part of being in Italy was when we took the day trip to Rome Rome is one of my favorite places now to visit in Europe and I cannot wait to go back. Rome is so rich in history and just the architecture there, the Colosseum, there's so much to see. And of course we heard the food is so much better in Rome than it was in Milan and Naples. So am I looking forward to going back to Rome and exploring? Absolutely. Would I go back to Milan and Naples? I don't have a, a, an urgent need to go back to either one of those cities, but I would love to go back to Rome. As far as the ratings go, both Milan and Naples get a two in my opinion. And Rome, of course, gets an eight and a half, deservingly. Unfortunately, Rome has to deal with the fact that it shared our visit within Milan and Naples. So the overall score for Italy is unfortunately a four. The next country on our list is the UK. I definitely did not do a lot of recording in the UK, mainly because we were spending time with family and I felt it was much better to just unplug a little bit, especially since we've been doing so much in the past couple weeks. We did, however, spend one night in London, which you guys saw in the London vlog. Now, I... The reason why we went to Europe this late in the year was because it was Nana's birthday. Because, trust and believe, I would not be in Europe when it's that cold. I don't like to be cold, as you all already know. <laughs> I do feel like London definitely deserved at least two to three nights, but we only had one to spare. There was a lot to do in London and it was a great experience going to Oxford Street and I'm not sure if it's always that lively but maybe it was because it was Halloween. There was so much happening that night. It was an overall... What the... Hold on. 
because there's family in the UK, I know I'll definitely go back. And next time when we go, it will not be in the fall. It would have to be when it's warmer. That way I can really get to explore the place and enjoy what the UK has to offer. From what I was able to see and do while there, I would give the UK about a seven and a half out of 10. Not bad, but also not the greatest, but I would love to go back and experience it again. Now, Paris is a place that most girls think about when they think of romantic movies and love and all of that mushy stuff. So I'm no different. I always think about Paris as, oh, it's so romantic of a place. Maybe it's a place to visit with your partner, but we did it as a family and it was just as fun. There's things to do for the kids, adults, any age in between. Now we spent two nights in Paris before we left and headed back to the US and we took a day trip to Epernay to do some champagne tasting. Of course that wasn't really for the kids so I would advise against taking kids to Epernay but Paris itself has so much to do. We really enjoyed the Louvre. So if Paris is on your list of places to go, be sure to check out the Louvre. We did not have enough time there because we had to catch a train to Epernay, so I feel like I missed out on a lot. Whenever I go back to Paris, the Louvre is on my list to spend at least a half a day there to make up for what I didn't get to see last time. Just a few things about Paris to keep in mind. Yes, Paris is as expensive as they say it is. It is not by any means cheap to be in Paris. So if you plan to go to Paris, make sure you got some coins. Now, if you want to save some money on transportation, because transportation does tend to be one of the most expensive things to do outside of like eating, um, definitely take the public transportation. We took the bus a lot and it was very convenient because a lot of the bus stops were close to our Airbnb or close to the train station or our point of interest that we wanted to see. Feel free to take the bus. It's not as bad as it sounds. We actually really did not mind. Now, we also took the train, but I'm sure if you've watched the vlogs, then you will know that we are not really great at that whole train thing. It just always seemed like whenever we were catching the train, we had some issue. It didn't happen every time, but it did happen quite often. One of those negative experiences happened on our way back from Epernay. Quick story time. If you watched our Paris vlog, then you will know that we had to change our ticket to Epernay due to inclement weather. So I think that had an effect on all of the trains for the next couple of days. So on our way back from Epernay, it seemed like the train that picked us up to bring us into Paris had some similar issues or some delay issues. So of course we got on the train and all the seats are taken. Or I shouldn't say all the seats are taken, but everyone that was sitting in a seat did not have someone sitting with them, but they may have had a bag or a box or something sitting on the seat next to them. So of course a group of us got on a train and when it was time for the train to pull off, we did not find seats. There were six of us just in my group. So we walked the entire train to find a seat and we could barely find seats together. There are six of us, like I mentioned, four adults and two children. It was easy for the adults to just sit wherever there's an open seat, but we also wanted to make sure that wherever the children were sitting, that adult, one, at least one of us adults, were sitting with the children. That was very difficult to find. When I got on the train, I started asking, is someone sitting here? Is someone sitting here? All throughout the train just to make sure we can find some seats. 
and the majority of the people were saying yes someone was sitting with them now that might have been the case but we were also at a train stop where people got off the train and then people also got off to get food or use the bathroom and come back on once the train started moving again and we all still did not have seats I kind of got a bit pissed off because at this point I don't think you expect me to stand this entire train ride to Paris if you have an empty seat beside you especially since there's six of us and it wasn't just my party that didn't have a seat there were others that didn't have a seat as well now me being the type of person that I am that really frustrated me because at the end of the day we're all trying to do the same thing we're all trying to get to our destination so I went back through the train again once the train started moving and asked everyone all over again who did not have anyone sitting next to them was anyone sitting there and this time yeah it might not have been in the nicest way but it needed to be done there's no way you can have an empty seat beside you and put your bag there especially when there's multiple people standing on the train and of course the second time when I went back around and asked things did change answers changed and people made accommodations even if they didn't want to because at the end of the day we're all people we're all trying to get to a destination and this is not your train you bought a ticket we bought a ticket there's a seat next to you I'm gonna sit down I was able to find seats not just for myself but the rest of the family and also some of the other people that got on the train that didn't have a seat and maybe didn't feel the need to speak up for themselves and for others but that's just who I am as a person if I see something that's happening that's not okay I'm going to say something and maybe that's not always a good thing but in this case I felt the need to say something and do something and of course we were all comfortable riding on the train back to Paris we all actually ended up sitting in the same what do you call it what are you cabin it's not a cabin car car train car <laughs> we all ended up sitting in the same train car with the kids and people ended up moving around and sitting you know with others that they may have been traveling with anyway just so that we could sit as a group and the children wouldn't have to be spread out by themselves so I think sometimes it just takes people realizing that hey maybe I'm doing something wrong to fix it because look at that by the end of it we're all sitting around having conversations with each other and talking about our countries our government and just the way that the world is and we all were able to connect with each other on different levels even though we did not look like each other and we didn't come from the same place outside of that one negative experience on the train everyone that we encountered in Paris were pretty nice people there were a lot of people that looked like us which was great to see and it could be that some, most of them are tourists or hey maybe they're locals and we just don't know but either way it was still refreshing to be in a country and seeing people that resembles us all in all my overall rating for Paris was an 8 I would love to go back to Paris again and spend maybe a week this time because I do feel like there's so much to do and our trip to Epernay was cut so short because of the schedule change with the train. I really don't feel like we got to experience it the way that we really wanted to. I will definitely be going back to Paris and checking out Epernay as well. <sighs> 
Well, let's get to my least favorite country to visit in Europe. I'm sure you guys already know if you've watched the vlog. Belgium is... <laughs> Belgium is my least favorite European country that I've visited. It was a nightmare from start to finish. It started off with the major language barrier that we had. Typically, we get to a country or a city, and of course, we don't always speak the language, but we're at least able to communicate with someone in the train station or the airport or the bus station. That can help us get around. When we got to Belgium, it was the most difficult place to navigate. When we tried to ask how to get from the train station to our Airbnb, we could barely understand each other. And not just to say we couldn't understand him, he couldn't really understand us either. So it was a major language barrier for both parties involved. Out of all the countries that we went to, that one was the most difficult to communicate. If you watched <laughs> the vlog, you would have seen the debacle that was our Airbnb experience. If you haven't watched it, please go and check it out. It's definitely an entertaining one. There's really not much of anything to do in Brussels. The only thing we were really able to do is go down to the town square to get chocolate and waffles and souvenirs. Outside of that, there is not much else to do. If you would like to save yourself some money, just skip over Belgium altogether. Yes, the waffles were great. Yes, the chocolate was delicious, but you could just order it online. Save yourself the trip. It's not even worth it. With that being said, Brussels got a whopping two, which means Belgium got a whopping two points overall rating deservingly and finally the moment we've all been waiting for my favorite country on this entire european trip my favorite country guys if you haven't found out already from the vlog is greece greece is a hundred percent an amazing country and i cannot wait to go back and visit. And no, I'm not being biased because my little brother is half Greek. That's not the reason. It really genuinely was a nice place to visit. We spent two nights in Santorini and we spent one night in Athens. And both cities are totally different vibe, but still a good overall experience. Our two nights in Santorini were full of fun, excitement, there was so much to do, the people were so nice, the views were just amazing, the caldera in Santorini, beautiful. Best view I had outside of Jamaica, best view I've had in 2023, it was, it was amazing. I cannot wait to go back and do Santorini again. I will say though, Santorini is on the more expensive side, but is it worth every penny? Absolutely. Another thing about Greece that we fully enjoyed was the food. We did not have a bad meal anywhere in Greece. Even just a regular small hero was delicious i don't know what they i don't know what they were putting in the food but we enjoyed every meal we had it, i cannot i cannot rave more about greece now i did not see a lot of us in athens or even santorini but it was still a warm environment for people that look like us we did not feel uncomfortable. We did not feel out of place. We did not feel unwanted. Everyone treated us so nice. From the person that picked us up from the airport, the people that hosted us in the Airbnb, just the people that worked at the restaurant. The only time we almost got chewed out a little bit was because 
we didn't order dinner at the restaurant after we made a reservation and yeah that was our fault but they still accommodated us and still treated us well gave us what we needed and hey we made it we made a reservation and we were full so we didn't eat we could have canceled yes but we didn't want to we still wanted to experience the restaurant and at least go and have dessert and a drink so we did that was the only time we thought they were about to chew us out a little bit and even that experience wasn't that bad nowhere near what we experienced in Italy if Greece is on your list of places to visit definitely check out Santorini and Athens Athens is rich in culture and history as well so nice place to visit one thing that I do have to say is that you cannot flush toilet paper while you're in Greece that is a thing like a real thing so regardless of what you're doing in the bathroom you're not allowed to flush the toilet paper like at all like no time you're not supposed to do it there was like once or twice that I totally forgot because it's like a, we're creatures of habits and we're used to flushing toilet papers but it quickly it gets in your brain once you realize like yeah I can't do this and in Santorini it makes perfect sense just because of how that whole area is built and set up you definitely don't want to mess with the plumbing that I could see that being a huge issue and it makes a lot of sense but outside of that I feel like I don't know I, I think that also was mentioned in Athens like there are signs in the bathrooms when you go to use them that you're not supposed to flush like public restrooms of course that you're not supposed to flush toilet paper so I think it might just be Greece overall so keep that in mind when you go to Greece you can't flush toilet paper there was one other experience that I don't want to add that to Greece itself because that's not their issue this was more so an airline issue and that definitely left a negative taste in our mouth for Aegean airline <laughs> little story time so on our flight from Naples to Athens my cousin and I were sitting on opposite sides of the plane we both had window seats but we were in the same aisle when it was time to get our meals and our drink the first person that came around assisted the guy that was sitting in the aisle I believe he wanted something special to drink so whoever the lady was she went and took his order and served him so he got served prior to the rest of the people getting service when it was time for the entire plane to get service someone else was pushing a cart through and serving whatever the sandwich was or in the drink that was the meal for the day she came by she stopped by my row which is also my cousin's row and she handed out the drinks and sandwich or whatever it was that she was given to my cousin's side and then she left now I don't know if she just thought that because the guy had a drink that he, that was sitting next to me that he got served but she never once looked at me and asked me if I wanted something to drink or if I wanted something to eat so once the cart rolled by I was turned my head and looked like and then I looked over to my cousin and I didn't realize that she also didn't get service either so we're looking at each other like what the? I know she not acting like she don't see us we the only two black people on this plane if you gonna see anybody you are going to see us we the only two black people on the plane she did not serve my cousin she did not even ask my cousin she didn't even acknowledge her basically the same thing she did to me she did to my cousin so of course I'm sitting there like oh no she did not so I 
hurried up and hit the bell automatically. The supervisor lady, well, I found out that she's the supervisor for the flight. She's the same lady that served the guy that was sitting next to me. Whatever he was having, she was the one that served him. Once I rang the bell, she came over and I explained to her, the lady literally just walked past both my cousin and I. And I'm not understanding why we're the only two people on this plane that she just rode past. She served everyone else in front of us and never even acknowledged us at all. So that was definitely a negative experience for us. And I'm not always the type that's gonna say, yeah, it's because I'm black or anything like that, but it was definitely feeling like it was because we were black. Because there's no way you did not see her and you did not see me. You just skipped both of us, but you served everyone else. Other than that, our trip to Greece was amazing. Aegean airline left a bad taste in our mouth and I don't wanna blame it on the entire airline. So I'll say that air hostess definitely left a bad taste in our mouth. Really, she didn't give us anything to drink at all. So she didn't even give us anything. She didn't even acknowledge us. And now for the ratings for Santorini and Athens and Greece overall. Santorini gets a solid nine because it was not only such a beautiful place, the food, the people, everything was just so great in Santorini. And then Athens comes in at an eight. So overall, Greece gets a score of an eight and a half. And of course, it is the number one country that we visited on our European tour. Of course, this is not a scientific rating or anything. This is just based off of my personal experience in each of these countries. And maybe your experience might be different. In the ones that were positive, I hope that you have the same positive experience that I had. And in the ones that weren't so good, I hope that they may have changed and who knows, your scores and your ratings might be a lot better than mine. If you visited any of these countries and your experience have been different, feel free to drop a comment below. Let me know how your experience was and maybe I might need to reevaluate and go back and check out these countries again. Now I wanted to share some tips that might be helpful on your experience in Europe. One of the things that I did before I left for my trip was I tried to start operating on European time. And I know this is not for everyone, but if you have the flexibility where you're able to alter your work schedule or just your daily schedule to operate on European time, I would highly recommend you do that. It definitely helps with jet lag. So by the time you get to Europe, you're already operating on European time. So you've already trained your body for the last three, four or five days to be on European time already. I found this to be helpful, especially since we were so constantly on the go. Sleep was not our main concern while traveling Europe. To make sure that you're not as exhausted or drained when you get there, it would be helpful to alter that bedtime schedule. Another tip when going to Europe is to make sure that if you plan on doing any tours or excursions, try to book them ahead of time. It was so helpful having all of our reservations already made prior to getting there that we didn't have to wait in line for anything. A lot of the tours that we booked were skip ahead or skip the line or something along those lines where we are our entrance into all of the attractions or points of interest were expedited. So if you have that option or if you're able to, Definitely book your tours, excursions, experiences ahead of time. It will help you so much by the time you get there. Another good thing that we did when we were in each of these cities is we took the hop on hop off bus. And transportation in Europe is pretty expensive for the most part. So doing the hop on hop off bus definitely saved us a lot of money. Many places that 
the hop on hop off bus stops that are points of interest so if you're planning to go to multiple places on a single day or over a couple days definitely book the hop on hop off buses because it does end up being a tremendous value even for two days a lot of the companies do sell 24 48 and even sometimes 72 hour passes which come in so handy book that hop on hop off bus ticket you will not regret it another thing to keep in mind when you get to the airports in Europe make sure you have some euros with you because the taxis do not always accept credit cards or they're not always a rideshare app you might order a taxi and you might have to pay them with cash if you are going to be hopping from country to country similar to how we did one more thing to keep in mind is your baggage that was one of the biggest things for us we both had a large suitcase a book bag a shoulder strap bag so we had pretty decent amount of luggage if there's anything that we could do differently is not pack as much as we did our bags were already overweight going to Europe and each of the airlines that we took in between the countries they all had different weight restrictions so we literally were playing Tetris each time we were leaving a city we did bring an extra duffel bag that we used at the airports whenever our checked bag needed to be lighter we would take stuff out and put it into that bag and then we would have that as our personal item and also our book bags but carrying all that weight around through those airports was a lot especially since we also had to wear our big coat wear our big boots it was and it was not fun it was really not fun it was honestly hard going from warm climate weather and then having to go to the uk where it was cold having to bring warm clothes but also not too warm because we had to deal with that temperature adjustment caused this to overpack a bit if you can at all pack light that's our best advice we also had a clothesline with us so where whenever we had the opportunity to do laundry we made sure that we did laundry so if you can scale back on clothing and just re-wear and wash what you have with you that might be the best bet because if i could do it over i would definitely not had made my suitcase and my book bag so heavy it was a lot to lug around last year i was constantly sick when i traveled every time i got on a plane and left jamaica and went to a different country or anywhere in particular i got sick so same with europe as soon as i got there i think it might have been day two into day three i was already sick good thinking on my part i made sure i packed my allergy medicine and anything that i needed for my sinuses so if you are the type of person that happens to get sick when you travel please be sure to pack your medicine of course they have medicine there as well but traveling from place to place it doesn't hurt to already have what you need with you so if you can just bring it especially if you have something in particular that works for you you might not be able to find that as easily when you get there and the last thing that came to mind is <laughs> that i noticed was a little bit different in europe than most places that i've been to a lot of the elevators in these buildings <laughs> were single person elevators it was almost impossible to fit a person and a bag especially a big bag in a lot of these elevators if they even had an elevator at all so if you are claustrophobic and you have to go up with a bag it might get difficult if you have to climb all those stairs there were times where we stayed in buildings that did not have elevators and we had to carry those big bags up and down those stairs but of course there were times where there were those single 
person elevators, but they're not the most fun to ride. I'm not claustrophobic, but I felt like it was too much. Bear that in mind when you're packing as well that you might not want to overpack where you are not able to carry your bag. There was no one to really help us to get into these places. If you don't have anyone with you that can help you, try your best to pack lighter. And that's all the tips that I have as far as what our experience was like in Europe and what you could probably do on your trip to Europe. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button. And if you enjoy content like this from me, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, turn on that notification bell. That way you know when I've posted my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.